Barring Hang Seng, most of the Asian markets, they are in the red after a weak handover from Wall Street. It's that the call rate has fallen today below the repo rate of 6.5%. It's a decent, a healthy quarter for Bharti Airtel. Consolidated revenue growth at 2.3%. 21,658. That remains an important area. I mean, I think if it breaks, I think it will signal more pressure. So Shuklin's performance this quarter has been better than Tata Motors. Revenue was down around 38%. 100 points low on the Nifty Bank, not looking good. It is outperforming the market in most of the most of the categories. And they have been, uh, you know, doing buybacks uh, in the last couple of years. I think they, they'll try to be nimble about, about liquidity management. Our objective uh, in getting this money also was to utilize it fully for growth capital. There's a lot of profit taking that's uh, you know quite apparent in some of the big pockets of the market, the big boys. As far as the mid-cap index is concerned, today is the ninth straight session of gains. Well, that is the la uh, the day so far, and uh, it's been a volatile first hour, two hours, but then it's been absolutely steady. 150 points on the Nifty is what we have. We are coming to you from the same TV 18 Moti Rose Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues Reeman will be here in the studio, and of course Nigel is joining in from the uh, newsroom floor. Guys, hi, good afternoon. Uh, it's uh, <clears throat> what can one say, right? I mean, the volatility, the up and down continues, but uh, for the last, uh, I think, uh, three or four hours now. Actually, three, three and a half hours, it's been a more up and up. Uh, so uh, the volatility that we saw, and there was, it was a fair bit. I mean, the market actually uh, rallied quite a bit, sold off, went into the red, and then came back up. And since then, it's not looked back. Uh, but that's all in the first one and a half hours or so. Yesterday is high of 21,964. Perhaps is the first number uh, which uh, the Nifty will take to uh, look to take out. Uh, Nifty Bank is down and out, and I said this in the morning as well. Maybe the Nifty Bank is uh, perhaps going to see a retest of 44,429. Uh, no help at all. I mean, it is not participating when the market is up and is uh, underperforming when the market is down. So that's the weakest part of the market. The IT index, surprisingly, is up 3%. Now, that's a, uh, a topic which we will discuss and debate. Infi TCS, both are up 4%. Is this, is this just fleeting or are uh, people going to take, I mean, are uh, taking serious sort of bets here on the IT services space? Uh, just one point. The Nifty CPSC index is still, the last I checked before I walked in, uh, it was still uh, up. Uh, okay, it's come off quite a bit, about a quarter percent. But on the weekly charts, you know, the RSI, the relative strength index is 95. That is, you know, the definition of overbought. Now, does something that need to happen immediately? Sometimes it does. In any case, I mean, if you're in that space, training that space, you know, with that kind of a reading, you have to be very, very careful. Global uh, action is once again in a bit of focus because uh, I mean global markets actually did not matter right for the last so many uh, when the market was moving up uh, with or without global help. But I think it's starting to matter at the margin a little bit because of two reasons why the U.S. market has not had any significant correction at all, even though we had a short uh, fortnight uh, pullback. Uh, and secondly, yields are jumping in the U.S. and dollar is uh, rising as well. So will that become a factor? Something to keep and take note of. Prima. Hi, uh, IT is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah. So if you pull up the contribution plate, it's not just banks, even heavyweights like Reliance Industries, ITC, they're all weighing on the benchmark index and it's countered by the strength in IT um, and even LNT on the way up is providing that support. That contribution plate will show you that picture. On the PSU side, it's been a bit mixed. So on the gaining front, you've got BPCL, which is up for you know 5.7% now. But on the losing side, the top loser is Power Grid. So that's down, close to about 3%. So today, the picture is a bit mixed. And Britannia, which reports numbers, uh, I think numbers should come up post-market hours, but Britannia is down about 1.6% ahead of its numbers. Well, uh, hi, guys. Yeah, I guess it's uh, you know more about individual stories and stocks the market is tracking. Uh, and case in point would be you know some of the earnings reactions that have gone down really well with the market. Idea Forge, the drone maker, for instance, is uh, still holding on to the bulk of that gain. Uh, almost 10% uh, yeah, higher Triveni turbine. So mid caps, wherever numbers have gone down well with the street, uh, they're looking good. And aside of that, this whole oil and gas complex, I mean, uh, I, my God, really, how do you even describe it? Look at IOC, BPCL, HPCL. Uh, look at something like an Indian oil right now. Petronet LNG, of course, the added buzz today is, uh, you know, the, the conference that's underway in Goa. And there's some talk that maybe, uh, you know, uh, India will get to extend its long-term supply contracts uh, on uh, LNG, 
with Qatar, it could be at uh, rates which are below market rates, actually very competitive rates. So maybe that's sort of added some flair. But oil and gas and a lot of the PSU oil and gas stocks, they are really the flavor of the afternoon now all over again. So I guess, Nigel, I, mean, I think the only uh, crib here is the bank nifty. Otherwise, the market's uh, you know got a nice rhythm to it. Well, indeed, you know, just take a look at individual stocks in the broader markets, the way they are moving around. Take a look at sale. You know, the stock has spiked up and spiked up in style. It's now up close to around 5.5%. Majority of that move has come in this hour itself. You have HFCL as well. That's another stock in there. It was more or less flattish. That's taken off in the last few minutes. And Jamna Auto, you know, Jamna Auto looks like it's breaking out of a multiple uh, downward uh, trending tra trajectory. Just take a look at the intraday chart. Now that stock is up close to around 10%. As we speak, so individual stocks, they are doing the thing of their own. So plenty of entertainment out there and 1,500 stocks advancing in comparison to 700 stocks that are declining. The big questions on the index itself first, how do you position yourself in the final hour of trade? And to help us out with that, we have Ashish Kyal who joins in. Ashish, what do you do with this market? You know, we seem to be in that range. Every time we are going to around that 21,650, 21,700, we're seeing some kind of support at those levels. On the upside, do you think we have enough with today's up move to get past the recent high, which is at around the 22,120 odd? Hi, afternoon to you and all the viewers. If you look at the index, uh, we can clearly see it is moving in a very broad range and it is moving in alternate days up and down move. Yesterday, we saw some kind of a sharp selling and today again, we are trying to see that recovery. Uh, post the budget on, uh, on 2nd of Feb, we saw a huge rejection from 22,120 uh, odd lifetime high levels. So I think it is uh, essentially moving in a range with 22,050 as a uh, important hurdle on the upside and the downside support for the index is around 21,650 odd levels. So that's the range. And if you, even if you look at the uh, derivatives data, <coughs> we can see uh, there is <coughs> build up on the 22,000 side on, on, uh, on either of it. So there is not much of a conviction because uh, even 22,000 calls and puts, we can see there is a large amount of buildup on both the sides that we can see. So there is kind of a short straddle in place, what I'm making out. Uh, and I think the market is going to be in range unless we break about that 22,050 mark. Having said that, the strategy for now can be possibly use kind of a dip if you get anything around 22,850 uh, uh, as a buying opportunity keeping 22,750 as a stop loss and expecting the index to move toward 22,970 odd levels. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Let's talk about... 21,900. <coughs> Got it. Thank you, Ashish, for that. Let's talk about IT. That's clearly the sector of the day. The index is up nearly 4%. There is an HSBC note. It's titled Jumping Ships in Slow Water. The reason is they've upgraded TCS to a buy. At the same time, they've downgraded Infosys to a hold. They're saying that Infosys' valuation gap to TCS is narrowed to only 10%. But the near-term growth and margin outlook for TCS is superior. In fact, TCS is the least volatile business and stock in the sector. And also, particularly on Infosys, they're saying it's difficult for the company to surprise positively on margins, which is the consensus expectations, because even if, because once growth recovers, the company will have to start hiring. If you remember, the company has been cutting down its headcount for the last couple of quarters. Their utilization has inched up. So the minute demand picks up, according to HSBC, the company will have to boost its headcount, and therefore margins may not increase or may not positively surprise. That said, they're also saying mid-cap IT is showing cracks. Now, remember, IT, mid-cap IT went through an extraordinary outperformance over the past two to three years. But now in the Q3 numbers, HSBC is seeing companies struggle a bit on profitability. And they believe the pressure on mid-cap IT is likely to you know, remain in the short term until demand meaningfully picks up, which according to them is a bit unlikely. But I think the key thesis is between Infi and TCS, they're saying um, you know, their vote is for TCS. Uh, we have with us, uh, I think, uh, Hemang Jani now, market expert, joining in. Hemang, um, between Infi and TCS, do you have a preference? I think stock-wise, Infi's underperformed TCS to some extent, considerable ex extent, given the number of downgrades that we've had on its growth outlook since the beginning of FI24. But uh, which one would you bet on right now? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Rima. I think clearly when we look at uh, the last, let's say, you know, one year or so, uh, the... Uh, performance and the uh, you know management commentary has been relatively stable when it comes to TCS enforces uh, you know we keep getting a bit of surprises both in terms of guidance revision 
uh, and also on the you know deal wins etc so i think uh, uh these infosys is about 10 percent cheaper uh you know it would be much better to stay with tcs given a slightly better visibility in terms of growth and much better commentary going forward so surely uh, it would make sense and also Rima, i think uh, both the numbers and the way things are panning out in the us if you see the technology space and the commentary which is out there actually is reinforcing the fact that you will see much better growth environment over the next three quarters. So there is some sort of a realignment that is happening in terms of the uh, sector weightage when it comes to IT uh, in, in Indian market. Mm. Um, Rima, in some senses, it could also, I mean, uh, our analysts saying that it could be the strong run of growth, growth data points in the US, that maybe we will actually... Again, it's that old thing, right? Uh, land, soft landing, hard landing, what kind of landing, no landing. But uh, you know, at least from the companies, the commentary <clears throat> from in the December quarter has been very non-committed. Yeah. You've yeah. only had, you know, one TCS, which kind of indicated a positivity surrounding the BFSI vertical. Mm. You had Wipro, which who used the word, the man theory used the words, some green shoots and discretionary spending. But other than that, across mid-cap and large-cap IT, no one's talking about an immediate demand pickup. I remember Infosys kept re, you know, uh, reinstating that it's the same right as Q2, now. nothing it's has changed in Q3. At mm. least they were very emphatic in sort of pointing that out, right? But sometimes prices move, move. right? And uh, I mean, you know, markets are a collective wisdom. And no one can see the future, so not even know, companies. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So basically, IT topped out in January of 2022, mm. right? And it, you know, started picking up only in April, May of 2023. So from Jan 2022, to almost April, May of 2023, IT was, you know, declining. Mm. At that time, the IT companies kept saying that all is well. Mm. And it's not that you started seeing cracks yeah. in your financial yeah. performance, right? Uh, the recovery in IT only started around April of 2023, which is when Infosys first downgraded their guidance. When they came out with their Q4 numbers, they downgraded their guidance or they indicated to weakness. And the minute they did that, you've started seeing the IT companies, you know, recover. So basically, stocks end up moving much before the audience. IT companies come out and, you know, suggest signal the turn in the cycle. Absolutely. And uh, actually, if you think about it, I mean, if your view is, a macro broader view is that the U.S. economy is going to do just fine. Right. One way to play that, I mean, actually, one of the only few ways you can play that directly is IT services, right? Mm. I mean, it's a trade. It's a view. You're expressing that view through a trade, buying Infosys TCS. And, uh, and you know, maybe TCS it's just that. Some, said something which you know made sense <clears throat> to me. They said that you know, US, uh, the large corporates are very quick to react to the, uh, you know, the the macros. Mm. So the minute they start seeing things are going difficult, they turn off the spending tab. Yeah. But the minute they start seeing hope things are improving, they will turn on the tap very quickly. So their decision making in that sense is, is very fast. is very fast. fast. So the minute the macro turns and the companies have confidence, corporate behavior in the US could change, By which way, will be I, I learned something very interesting, which I did not know for this quarter, where for which US is reporting numbers for what is it, fourth, fourth quarter, fourth right? Quarter. For uh, the earnings for Russell two thousand companies is mm. down 25%. Profits are down 25% for Russell 2000. Wow. I mean, I, I didn't the know that. The market has its own no, <clears throat> way of... And, and by the way, no, the index is not performed. Russell 2000 is compared far... To, uh, compared uh, to the Nasdaq, etc. It's been an underperformer. No way. Performer. It's actually yeah. Yeah. it's actually lost money, right? Mm. Nasdaq is up uh, 30%, yeah. uh, but uh, this is lost money. And one of the reasons is because these are smaller companies and all of them have got debt, which mm. is very difficult to refinance but, mm. at these rates, these high uh, interest rates. So... Uh, you know, a very big dichotomy playing out there as well, where, uh, you know, the big tech is leading Nasdaq higher, but Russell 2000 index is underperformed and earnings, for good reason, uh, is uh, down and out as well. Uh, <clears throat> Hemang uh, is, okay, I think uh, Hemang will get uh, get in once again in just a bit, <coughs> but Petronet LNG is the other one that we want to talk about. Sources say that the company is likely to sign a multi-billion dollar deal to extend LNG imports from Qatar. Petronet LNG, of course, uh, gets in... Uh, uh, LNG regasifies it and uh, supplies it. Uh, Sonal is here with more details on this one. Sonal. Uh, well, it's a PTI story because there's a lot of action happening on the sidelines of the India Energy Week and that's where these updates are coming in from. One of them says that uh, Petronet LNG will be signing a deal with Qatar to extend import of 7.5 million tons of uh, uh, LNG in a year. And the important bit here is that price will be significantly lower than the current price at which uh, it is being imported. Petronet currently imports around 8.5 million tons a year from of LNG from Qatar. This is via two contracts. The first contract is a 25-year 
deal which will expire in 2028 so there is an extension that has been decided on according to reports uh, which will be for around 20 years the second deal is for 1 million tons but it happened only in 2015 so that will be negotiated separately because that is also a long term deal now the current deal is priced at 12.67% of the Brent crude oil prices because there is a slope it's a percentage of basically the crude oil prices that's how gas prices are mapped when it comes to imports uh, plus around 0.5 dollars per MMBTU in terms of the external or the additional spread that will come on those gas prices. Uh, so this is something which is lower than the previous rates at which the uh, LNG was imported. Additionally, there was a fixed charge of around 0.5 dollars uh, that would be scrapped according to sources and India will also save 0.3 dollars per MMBTU that it incurs on shipping. This is according to the uh, details of this particular agreement. Of course, it's not finalized but if it does come by, it would mean savings for Petronet LNG in terms of LNG imports. It's not only Petronet, a Bloomberg story also suggests that Qatar is in talks with Gale, IOC and the other LNG players as well. Uh, so this is a space that we'll be watching out very closely. For now, the stock is higher in trade. Oh yeah, absolutely. I caught that as well. So a lot of the agencies, why agencies are talking about a PTI Bloomberg, that Qatar is out to woo Indian oil and gas companies. Petronet is of course one of, one of them and maybe, uh, you know, we managed to get a pretty competitive rates as these long-term contracts are uh, renewed. Hey Manga, good afternoon. So, you know, uh, uh, come in on this, not just Petronet, but just whatever's happening in the oil and gas space, even with the refiners, uh, you know, IOC, BPCL, these have been absolutely euphoric moves. Uh, what is your take? Do you like any of the stocks here? We've seen a massive re-rating across uh, you know, this oil and gas and many more PSUs. But particularly this, uh, you know, oil refining companies, though we may all debate and argue that they have really moved up uh, quite a lot from the low. But uh, if you look at their valuations, if you look at their cash flows, uh, I mean, it's not looking like, you know, they're out of whack. Uh, HTCL is still at about 1.2 price to book, uh, blowout quarter. And if the crude prices remain somewhere here and there, 5% plus or minus, again, you will see a decent growth. So I think this is a one theme where majority of the market consensus of analysts have a slightly negative view because of the legacy issues. But the current trend in the numbers, the valuations, written on equity, it is all pointing to some sort of a positive traction. So within the PSUs, if I have to pick, you know, I will definitely go with something like uh, PPCL, IUC, Petronet, LNG, Gale. These are the names where we still feel that, you know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, comfort in terms of valuations and growth both. All right, Hemang, I wanted to ask you about the real estate space. And Godrej property is yet another, another quarter of record bookings. Did you have a look at those numbers and your view on the stock? But good set of numbers, uh, highest ever bookings, about 57 yeah. billion up, uh, almost 76% YOY and 14% quarter on quarter. Uh, and on many parameters, when you look at uh, the real estate numbers, they are looking uh, quite decent. The pipeline continues to look good. Uh, only issue is that stocks have run up, so valuation comfort may not be there. But good to have as a part of slightly high meta portfolio, both Odre's property and also uh, you know, Loda, these are the two preferred names that we have at this point. Okay, all right, uh, Hemang, stay on. We will take a very quick break. We have some more questions for you. Come back in a bit. And also, on the other side, we will have with us Anish uh, Tawakle of ICSA Prudential AMC. We'll get their view on the market as well. Okay, welcome back. Uh, the market's up 155 points and uh, it's looking 
uh, pretty good, uh, all, all, all uh, told. And uh, very unlike the early one, one and a half hour of uh, volatility, will we see more of it? Last three days, remember, uh, you know, the markets come off. By the time we've shut shop, we've been sharply off the day's high. Yesterday, it was 200. It was almost 300 the day before. And of course, I mean, last Thursday, uh, it was about 170 odd points or so. So, uh, you know, after all of that, this is a decent pullback if he managed to end with these gains. Anish Tawakle is now joining us. He's Deputy Chief Investment Officer, Equity and ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Anish, uh, good afternoon. Great to have you with us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, it's a pleasure. Good I mean, afternoon, Prashant. Good uh, to be yeah. here. <laughs> good to have you, and I hope this is the first of many. Uh, you know, you you, uh, you folks at ICIC have always known to be uh, contrarian. Uh, but now the problem in the market is that you had to have, you had to, you had to find stuff to be contrarian on, right? Uh, over the years, you, you bought power stocks when they were down and out. You bought, uh, you know, other things which were very cheap. PSUs, for example, early on. Uh, but compared to historical valuations, very few sectors actually give you that comfort now. Uh, so, what's the thought process? What's the approach uh, from the investment team at ICICI Pro? So, uh, Prashant, basically, look, you get uh, returns through two sources. Right? One is multiple expansion. The second is earnings. I would agree with you that multiple ex multiples have expanded pretty much across the board, and there are no sectors that are you know, screaming cheap at this point. I don't think we can identify any. But fortunately, the economic outlook, at least from a cyclical perspective, is positive. And uh, the earnings growth trajectory we do expect over the next few years should be healthy. And when you have an economy that's poised for a cyclical recovery, it's the domestic cyclical sector that we, uh, we kind of expect to do well. So this would be sectors like met um, automobiles, cement, uh, industrial and capital goods, uh, normally financials, um, this time I would say financials other than banks, so insurance companies, asset managers. Broadly, the domestic cyclical space is where we are uh, positioning ourselves. Anish, you've led me to the next uh, question. Hi, this is Reema here. Why not Hi, banks? Reema. Last year, everyone we sp spoke to said <clears throat> banks are screaming by, the asset quality is under control, loan growth is picking up. Yes, NIMS will moderate, but it won't be such a big hiccup. Uh, why have you been cautious on banks and what's the view from here on? Oh, so our view was that uh, everything that could have gone right for the banking sector had gone right. Uh, and the competitive intensity was increasing uh, following the consolidation that had happened in the, in, the, in the banking industry or in the financial industry more broadly. So the fight for deposits we expected was going to be very, very intense. And that is playing out as we had expected. Mm. Uh, Anisha, just stay on. You also did mention that you like other stuff in financials. You like NBFC, you like insurance. So just, just hang on there because we want to met, get some more sort of uh, sort of uh, perspective in that thought process. But, but insurance is making headlines this afternoon in any case. A lot of insurance stocks are up and about. HDFC Life, by the way, last I checked, was up about 4 4.5%. Ditto for Max and a couple of others as well. Even ICICI Prudential, Lombard, you know, uh, ICICI Pru Life. All of the stocks are up and about. So here's the news. The Parliament Committee... Uh, report on finance has been tabled in the parliament today and a lot of recommendations are being made about the insurance sector including things like maybe composite licenses perhaps lowering gst on certain type of insurance policies so let's go across to parikshit to understand some of these details parikshit well the parliamentary committee on finance has met officials from the industry from irdai uh, the ministry of finance and uh, has looked at ways to strengthen the insurance sector in India. They have noted that it's going very fast in a very robust manner, but at the same time, insurance penetration remains very low. Now, one of their top recommendations is rationalizing the GST rate on insurance products, which is 18% at present. And specifically, they speak about uh, health insurance products, particularly retail policies for senior citizens and micro-insurance policies. These are sectors or products where the tax rate can be rationalized. Also, the capital requirement, the minimum capital requirement of uh, 100 crores for uh, companies to enter the insurance sector. This, they feel, needs to be rationalized so that smaller niche players can enter and cover wider geographies in the country. A composite license must be considered. Now, this is something which is complicated. It will need amendments to the Insurance Act 
And this is what the finance ministry has recommended, that if you bring this policy uh, with a composite licensing uh, uh, arrangement, that could give a major push to the insurance sector. The Ayushman Bharat scheme, uh, they have pondered over this in great detail and said that if you allow the missing middle to participate, it can become effective for a very large section of Indians. There should also be a roadmap to strengthen the four uh, public sector insurance companies and disinvestment is one of the options to strengthen them. And finally, they have said that IRDI must consider instituting an ombudsman to deal with consumer grievances on the lines of the RBI. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much. All important points there. Thanks, Parikshit, for uh, bringing us up to speed on what those recommendations are like. Uh, Anish, so now to come back to your point, uh, you mentioned that, you know, uh, you, you're sort of looking away from banks and I guess you're a bit ahead of the curve because the market's only waking up to that reality now. Uh, tell us, what do you feel about, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the non-bank lenders and also areas like insurance where there's a lot of regulatory action, whether it's higher surrender values or these tax tweaks that we keep seeing. So, you know, uh, the, the, regula the regulatory piece, would that not be an overhang? Yeah, so the way uh, we see the financial sector broadly is there are three sources of intermediaries uh, between savers and investors. You have banks and NBFCs, that's one. Second are asset managers, and the third are insurance companies. Now, in a cyclical recovery, normally, both savings and investments pick up, and you should see strength across the board. This time, our view was that in the banking and NBFC space, there would be heightened competition, so we were a bit cautious there. But the other two would still be beneficiaries of a cyclical recovery. So asset managers and insurance companies, we've been po uh, positive on. Of course, there are regulatory uh, you know, uh, issues that can keep cropping up. And that you kind of handle by how big an overweight or underweight, you, uh, how big you take uh, a weight you take based on your risk appetite. But the underlying cyclical trend was positive. Mm. By the way, uh, important <clears throat> statements from Bharti Airtel about Capex will moderate from FI24. This was the big thesis in the market that uh, Bharti Airtel and Reliance Geo have both front-loaded their 5G-related capex. But now that most of their, they've met their rollout plans, both these companies, they've achieved whatever they wanted to in terms of rollout. Going ahead, FI25, the capex intensity will come down, which means there's more money in the hands of Bharti Airtel. And maybe we could see that being given out to shareholders via dividend. Uh, so, you know, the company coming out and saying that we will see a moderation in capex in FI25. Uh, I'm just trying to see if they do hint anything about a possible tariff hike post-election, I'm sure. Uh, the investors will be asking them. Uh, no, absolutely. And uh, stocks up about what, two and a quarter percent, two and a third of a percent right now. Anish, uh, let's just, you know, uh, PSUs are not a, a one homogeneous group, right? I mean, it's just defined by ownership, but it's so uh, vast and varied. Uh, but you, you guys were uh, sort of positive early on, and uh, now you find valuations and levels less favorable there. Uh, but we're still seeing, you know, mutual funds launching uh, PSU funds. Uh, so fresh money uh, coming into that space will come into that space if this continues. Uh, wh what are the areas which you still are, are bullish on where one can still allocate within the space? As defined by ownership, as I said, it's not homogeneous. But if I were to use that PSU as a basket, uh, where is their value or what will do well, according to you? So, um, you know, as I said, uh, there's no area which is uh, extremely cheap at this point and neither are PSUs that cheap anymore. See, the reality is that uh, the outlook and performance of the PSUs have improved and some of the re-rating is justified. But at this point, at least our view would be that, uh, you know, the, they are closer to being uh, valued fairly and one should gradually uh, be taking money off the table. Take money off the table. Uh, just a quick word on autos, uh, which you do like. What's the thesis here and what specifically? Are we talking about two-wheelers, tractors, commercial vehicles, four-wheelers? What, uh, what segment there and why? So, uh, we are more positive on two-wheelers and passenger vehicles. Uh, I think in a cyclical recovery, you see, these are discretionary items of spending, right? When the economy is soft, these are the items that drop disproportionately. And correspondingly, when the op uh, economy picks up, that's where the incremental uh, output comes from. So both uh, two-wheelers and four-wheelers, and particularly at the bottom end, right, we feel that as the economy broadens out, you would see uh, a stronger recovery in these uh, segments. Mm. 
you know, Anish, I just want to <coughs> sort of chip in over there with another question. Since you're talking about the whole, uh, you know, industrial thesis and you're still positive on, on that space. The thing is that, uh, you know, earlier on, a couple of years ago, you guys were the outliers, you know, the anti-consensus call of looking at a lot of these CapEx stocks. But now that has become the market call and all these stocks are, you know, they're, they're running through the sky. So what is the approach you're taking on industrials, the whole CapEx theme? Uh, yeah. How do you find valuations now, given previous cycles and comparisons? And how are you going about deploying money here? So the approach we take is that, look, um, are earnings upgrades more likely or downgrades? Right Now it's not a game of multiples. Uh, multiple expansion has taken place, and we are not betting for further multiple expansion. Uh, it may happen, but that would be upside uh, and, you know, the cherry on the cake. But we are looking at earnings outlook, and the view is that if the economy gains further momentum, which we do expect it to, you are more likely to see upgrades in these sectors than downgrades. And we will change that, you know, when we feel, look, the upgrades are done, the models are being stretched to a point where, you know, uh, upgrades are very unlikely and more likely that companies will start disappointing. That's when we'll, uh, we'll switch. Okay, so so within that, I mean, are you more comfortable right now, let's say, with a lot of the the heavy engineering companies on the capital goods side, or are you looking at, you know, uh, contracting firms? What, because oh, it's a large means. complex, See, right? Uh, you know, uh, look, when you run a uh, large portfolio like ours, right, um, basically, you do look, have, to, have to look broadly for opportunities. And we find uh, industrial and capital goods, automobile, cement, across the board, right? You can, uh, if, see, if they do well, they'll all do well together, right? The earnings upgrade should come through in all, the, in all of these sectors. If the economy doesn't deliver, then you'll have problems across these sectors. It's not like one sector you can pick and say the other one will not do well. Did you guys see that story, by the way, uh, Hyundai apparently mm. is coming out it's with an IPO. looking to list in India. Mm. And I think two and a half billion dollars, I think uh, <clears throat> that's going to be the size of the IPO. Some of those reports are to be believed. So I went and looked at what Hyundai's market cap in Korea, which is the home mm. country, is. it's mm -hmm. about 37 billion dollars. Mm. You know what multiple it trades at? Five times. Six, five, yeah. Five, five or six, six times earnings. P.E. Price to earnings. Well, here, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll start at some 40 times. 40, 50. <laughs> and so the point is, it's got, by the way, dividend yield, there is 14%, wow. you know, wow. uh, it trades at five times. So mm. the question is, why not? And why the market not? is giving you the multiple, uh, gather it. Mm. So I think, uh, I mean, I just, it just uh, struck me as he said that uh, Anish was saying that he likes the auto space. Anish, just a quick word on cement as well. Uh, that's the other space that you uh, like. <coughs> What's the thesis uh, there? Look, uh, I think home building and urbanization will be a key part of the, the growth story going forward. And if you see uh, home building, etc. <laughs> taking place, then cement is uh, certainly going to uh, volumes-wise do well. And this is a seg uh, material that can't be imported, exported, right? It's a very local market. So if you have strong positions in the local markets that you operate in, uh, you do well, basically. And uh, our view is that urbanization and home building will be a key driver of growth. In fact, if you look at how the economy has shaped up and what's driven the recovery, it's basically coincided with a pickup in home buying, the inventory is cleared, and then home building activity has started. So home building is central to this uh, thesis of the economic recovery, and cement is a clear uh, beneficiary of that. Uh, I need, Anish, I know I remember that a couple of years back, you used to look at IT very closely. We haven't spoken about your view on technology uh, in the current cycle. Now, the stocks have already out of, done well, considering the financials they've reported over the last nine months. Uh, what's the call on IT? So our published portfolios were uh, slightly underweight IT. Uh, we don't uh, think that growth will be spectacular. I mean, this will should be a normal kind of year for IT, for the IT industry. See, in a normal year, IT services industry grows 3 to 5%. Indian companies grow faster because they gain a little bit of market share. This should be a normal sort of year, right? Um, and uh, then additional benefits the IT industry gets if the rupee depreciates, which is not our view this year, right? We don't expect big rupee depreciation this year. So IT, we are slightly underweight. Anish, before we let you go, I mean, um, anything where any sector or any particular area of the market where you see froth, where you really think that there are excesses and something you may want to red flag for our viewers? I think small and mid caps are an area where we are seeing a lot of froth uh, that's being driven by flows 
and i think people are extrapolating peak profitability and very strong growth for very long periods of time so in the small and mid cap space we'd be careful anish great conversation and we look forward to more conversations with you thank you for joining in thank you very we much we will slip we'll slip into a break on that note on the other side we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms is saying in our segment d street chatter we also get you a few btsd calls from our technical expert Welcome back. You're tuned in to Closing Bell, and we are coming to you live from the Motilal Oswal Newsroom. Well, the markets are holding with good gains of around 160 points. The Nifty Bank is doing a relative underperformance. It's a good time to get in Nimesh to tell us what's going on in D Street Chatter. Well, uh, Nimesh, today at least we're not seeing like yesterday, right? Yeah. When closing bell started, suddenly the markets got a little bit jittery. Today we're holding on to those gains. We're on the flow situation. We're holding on to the gains, right? Exactly. I mean, after a, a minor gap, of, we've, we've seen a day, it's almost at days high. Yes. But the good part today is it's largely led by the large caps, and within large caps, this is a technology stocks which is helping the bulls to rally so much. And, and, and the good part is today's technology rally is led by FI buying as well. So there is institutional chase happening in the technology stocks in today's trade. The index is up 3%. Right. A lot of individual names are between 3 to 5%, 7% as well. So technology as, as, a, as a basket has been well bid today, is, is what I understand. Uh, a bit of profit booking though in the in select PSU name. So PSU now has to be you know uh, classified into, into different groups. Now there is a bit of rotation as well happening within the PSU basket. While the momentum in OMCs continues, some bit of profit booking is visible in the power PSU, so to speak. Even, in, even for that matter, in the bank PSU. So yes. the PSU bank index is down 1% in today's trade despite the fact that there is so much of momentum in the, in the PSU basket. So, uh, you know, the feedback is, while, uh, while there is a lot of momentum in the PSUs, now watch out for, uh, you know, some signs of profit booking as well. And not every PSU is going to go up from here. In fact, you know, a couple of days back, there was a feedback as well that one of the large mutual fund has started booking profit in the PSU stock. So, Absolutely. that's been the trend across other, sec across other funds as well. So, now uh, there is a bit of a divided street. Not everything in PSU is going to go up. That's the clear message. As far as dealing with the concern. Appears OMCs and metals, at least both yeah. of them are doing two pockets of strength out there. But Nimesh, individual stocks, so give us a sneak peek, give us some more stocks. What are you looking at? Sure. So, in terms of individual names, the first is I've classified a couple of stocks which where there are going to be large blocks expected soon. So, uh, watch out for Vedanta, there's going to be a large block very soon. So, that's that's one. Mankind Pharma, uh, you'll see a large block in Mankind Pharma as well. I understand, uh, you know, some, some buy side analysts are, are, are already been approached. So, I expect a large block there as well, as well as in LNT Holding Finance. So, these three other large blocks which, which are expected uh, in, in the days to come. So watch out for that. The second stock is SJV, and I spoke about some bit of profit booking now in, in, in some in select PSU names. SJV stands out. Big self is what I understand from the larger FIRS. And, uh, and you know, looks like some domestic mutual funds are now looking to book as well in some of the big movers in the last few months. So SJV uh, uh, is on the negative side. The third name is Infosys. While in that, uh, IT Pascal is doing good today. Infosys has largely been uh, outperforming on very, very strong buy flow. So, uh, some bit of interest seems to be back in, in the IT names and Infosys stands out and large buy, flow, uh, buy flows. And the last one is BF Utility. After a long time, some bit of buying traction seems to be back in this particular stock. A bit of momentum off late and understand a leading uh, influential uh, H&I investor is an active buyer in, in BF Utilities and hence a big up move in, in that stock as well. Okay, all right. Got that. Uh, lots of interesting stocks there. Thank you, Nimesh, very much for the latest. By the way, it looks like uh, there's confirmation coming in on that news that agencies were talking about, about uh, this uh, extension of the long-term mega contract with uh, Qatar that Petronet LNG has. So we don't know the exact uh, terms of the renewal, but the expectation was that the terms are going to be far more favorable this time around with uh, the renewal happening at lower than prevailing market rates uh, with respect to LNG imports coming in. And there's a bit of a sell-on news playing out now on Petronet LNG. Okay, let's uh, get to Ashish KL then and get some more ideas in terms of for what to trade. Ashish, uh, thanks for uh, you know coming back. So uh, tell us, I mean, it's been a pretty decent day as far as the market is concerned. X of banks. Final uh, couple of minutes, what would your advice be? 
Uh, see, if you look from the index perspective, I think, uh, uh, as I said earlier, it's a range bound. And bank nifty is especially something that uh, looks weak to me. So I'm going to be a little cautious about uh, where the overall index is headed. Bank nifty is still not trying to show any kind of a positive tick. It's still down by 150 points. And that's where I am cautious. But if you look at IT and pharma, those are the sectors and the stocks I think are going to buzz around. So if I have to bet for tomorrow, I'll rather bet on the individual names and individual stocks. And uh, uh, on that side, I think uh, the first one I'm going to look at is emphasis. We can clearly see a very strong uh, move in emphasis uh, over in, in today's session after a long time. And uh, the stock formed a low around 2,480 odd levels and showed a very good recovery uh, from those odd levels. And I think uh, the volumes are also picking up. So emphasis can be a good stock for, uh, for buying now and maybe selling tomorrow uh, for the target of 2,780 on the upside. and. Uh, we are maintaining a stop loss of 2490 and the other stock is ipka labs which is on my radar so if i get any kind of a dip in ipka lab that can be a classic opportunity to buy it showed a very strong breakout in today's session the pharma stocks are buzzing around and i think the momentum will continue from here so one can create long positions in ipka lab aiming for 1290 and one the downside maintain a target a uh, stop loss of 1155 thank you Ashish for that. Uh, today's new listing, BLSE Services, has had a blockbuster day one. The issue price was 135. The stock is now trading at 370. It's up 175 percent. It was a small issue, uh, but it's had an overwhelming response. Just a quick word on what the company does. The company has various touch points, about 98,000 plus touch points in India, particularly centered in tier two, tier three cities where the company provides banking correspondence services, which basically means in places where you don't have a bank, you can, you know, your, this banking correspondent can provide banking services, like opening a deposit, uh, whether it's asking for a, you know, checkbook, all the bank-related services. They also get about 28-30% of their revenue from <coughs> e-governance services, which basically means it will help you get your Aadhaar card, your PAN card, do your KYC, birth certificate, death certificate, land records, etc. And there is a very small portion is assisted e-services. In that, the company is saying that we anyway have touch points, uh, you know, so we can provide a lot more, whether it's even e-commerce uh, for the people. Now, the reason why the stock has done so well on day one, one, it had seen very strong subscription. The overall subscription was 162 times. Two, the company's footfalls at those touch points are close to about 4 lakh people every day. And the business model is that you increase the number of touch points and you try and cross-sell more to the people who come to your touch points and basically try and earn more money out of them. Third, the revenues for the company aided by acquisitions have gone up at a pretty fast clip. In FY21, the revenues were 65 crore. It's now gone up to 243 crore, aided by acquisitions, as I said, particularly on the banking side. And the company is scouting for more acquisitions. Uh, also, the company's margins over the last 18 months have been fairly steady between 14 to 15 percent. This is at the EBITDA level. So that's about BLSE services. Uh, the stock right now is up 170 percent. Here's what we'll do. We'll slip into a very short break on that note. On the other side, we'll invite Jay Bala of Cash uh, to talk about the market technicals. Welcome back. You're with us on Closing Bell. We're in the last leg and we have uh, Jay Bala of Cash the Chaos with us. Jay, hi. Good afternoon. Good to have you on the show. So the market's uh, trying to sort of uh, get its mojo back. Banks are not uh, playing ball. But then you have, you know, today, for instance, IT has come up and made up for it. Uh, what is the sense from here on? A lot of sector rotation playing out. Uh, what levels are you eyeing on the Nifty? Yeah, uh, thanks, Shilby. Uh, good to be here. Uh, see, the markets are, are, are fatigued, and it's pretty obvious when, you know, a couple of sessions ago, when the markets tried to push to uh, new all-time highs, it got uh, uh, re rejected by, and markets came down by 300 points. But, you know, uh, as I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, the Nifty has been a bit ambivalent, unlike, uh, unlike the banking sector. Uh, the banking sector uh, is, is, is uh, in, in a uh, slightly firm downtrend. And, uh, and I've, I've been saying that the... Uh, uh, floatability of Nifty or the levitation of Nifty is quite dependent on Reliance staying about 26.45. So if uh, if we see Reliance close below 28.10, that will be the first warning sign that the rally in the Nifty is starting to uh, give way. But as long as 26.45 holds and the January low holds for the Nifty, uh, the Nifty can try to push to a little more higher highs. 
but it's not a necessary condition, but it, 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 it's a probability. And uh, if the banking sector had a close below 44,429, that will you know, put the uh, banking index and the whole overall market in a firm barrier. So uh, the banking sector is very crucial. Okay, all right. Uh, hi, Jay. Good afternoon. Good to see you in. By the way, you know, I think SCI should be a stock that you should keep in focus. In the last one month or so, you know, SCI is a stock that's gone one way. But now we're getting some clarification from our Delhi team. Parikshit tells us that there's no active consideration or discussion within the government on privatizing shipping and ports. So SCI is a stock. It went, I think, from around 190 rupees or all the way to around 270. As we speak, SCI is currently at the low point of the day. Just keep an eye out on that one. Well, uh, Jess, since we're talking about stocks, tell us, what do you have for us on your radar? Yeah, the PSU sector, whether it be banks or, uh, you know, uh, just other stocks in the PSU space, they haven't yet topped. Uh, so, you know, I like uh, BEL from that space. Uh, BEL may be, right now, you know, if it closes above 187, it will confirm that the short-term correction is done. It has a potential to scale about 210. But there is a small possibility if the you know correction is incomplete can drop closer to 173 and then go to 210. So you know a stock uh, above 170 makes sense. And um, the other stock I have is Tata Consumer and Bullish on. You know um, again once again similar uh, price structure to, to BEL. Um, a stop uh, to 1105 and an objective of about close to 1300. Um, I'm slightly bearish on trend. Uh, it's, it's a uh, you know it's, uh, it's in the medium to long term. It's quite bullish, but th there's a potential for a, sh a short term drop to about 2700. So place a stop above the recent high of about 3295 and expect 2700. Mm. Jay, uh, have you had a look at the charts on uh, you know IOC, BPCL, HPCL? Uh, you know a lot of these names uh, because they've been the best performers of 2024 so far. The oil and gas PSUs. Uh, or even, I mean, beyond oil and gas, even a stock like Coal India, I mean, it's had a great run. Do you see any more juice left in uh, some of these PSU trades? Yeah, if you recall from our December conversation, Surbhi and I, when HPCL and BPCL were doing, uh, you know, as good as they were doing now, I said there's a pullback due, but that's not the end of the move, and uh, I'm still bullish on the energy energy space, and they have done pretty well. I was more bullish on BPCL than HPCL, but HPCL has done equally as well as, uh, uh, you know, BPCL. So, but this leg is, is the final stretch, but the, you know, they are coming close to an important uh, turn. Uh, they have not turned, but they are coming very close to an important turn. So some risk management here would make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, lock in some gains. Um, this may not this may not be uh, you know a, a major turn, but it could be a, a short to medium turn pull back from here. Hmm. Uh, any thoughts on uh, frontline IT? Is there any stock where you are seeing a lot of upside? No, I've been slightly, uh, you know, uh, downbeat on frontline uh, uh, IT names. I, I, I've, I've been bullish on mid-cap IT names from October 2022. Uh, you know, uh, persistent was my top pick, and that's been uh, the top performer too. I uh, know the move, uh, you know, still, despite uh, TCS clocking all-time high, a little bit suspect for me. It might have a little more juice to somewhere close to 4200, 4300. But I, I still have, uh, you know, a, a holdback. The, the best pick for all uh, within the frontline IT games has always been HCL Tech. I mean, the only stock that's, that's been, you know, uh, giving a very clear bullish signs since last year. Uh, but, you know, Infosys, uh, Wipro uh, and TCS, despite its all-time high, a little, little bit suspect for me. But as long as Nifty uh, IT index can hold about 34,200, which I mentioned three, four weeks back too, I know this, the sector can still levitate up uh, but if 36100 by the give way, I will start getting a, more cautious on the frontline IT names rather than the mid cap IT names. <clears throat> Jay, uh, any uh, so any other trades uh, that you want to put out, position or otherwise? Uh, I can probably look at uh, something like Swin Life Senses from the uh, pharma space. Now, I, I mean, I've been bullish on pharma since uh, 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 September October of last year. So there's still uh, some juice left within the pharma space, but uh, as long as uh, Suven so holds about uh, 100, there's potential for this to scale about uh, 140. Uh, so, you know, a bullish on pharma. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, Ajay, I don't know whether I missed that, but the dollar index, you know, that's the one that's been a bit of a worry. So if you could tell us uh, levels you're looking on that one. 
as well as uh, you know from the global uh, uh, global scenario, the ten-year yield as well. You know, if you have any view on the bond as well as on the dollar index. Now, I've, I've been pointing to the pullback in the dollar as not as a bearish trend and as a corrective uh, trend. And you know, yesterday the dollar crosses. You know, I have had a significant uh, breakout, and this looks like um, you know. Uh, 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 much higher levels are due for the dollar index. Initial objective is about 107 and change, which is the October 2023 uh, high for the dollar index. And that will be inverse levels for the dollar process, which will be the October 2023 lows. Um, you know, um, and the 430 bips level is very important when it comes to the US 10 year yields. But given the dollar's price action, uh, I think it's just a matter of time before 430 bips gets taken out. And once that's taken out, it will signal that the uh, next higher uh, up move for the U.S. 10-year yields is due, and that will probably, you know, um, pull all the, um, uh, you know, bond markets in the rest of the world to uh, copy it. Now, watch the um, 238 levels on the German 10-year. Could, that could probably be the first to take out uh, before the 430 levels. If that happens, that will also signal the interest rate cycles uh, is uh, taking a turn. And uh, Jay, what did you mention was your uh, immediate target for the U.S. 10-year? 4.1 today. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't have an immediate objective, but if 430 uh, were to be taken out, I would think that the 500 bips that we saw last year, that will get taken out. This will be the start of the path towards about 570 bips, maybe even 660 bips. So, you know, uh, we are uh, that will be a, a significant uh, uh, marker for me. It's just uh, uh, it, uh, uh, it signifies that the uptrend has resumed for the US 10 years and the downtrend for the US 10 year bond prices. Okay. All right, Jay. We'll uh, leave it on that note for this afternoon. Thank you very much for uh, joining in and giving us your view. Well, uh, while uh, we see how that move on yields plays out, I mean, today was a good day. No denying that because you look at the market, even the Bank Nifty's cut its losses quite significantly. And the Nifty is going home at the day's high with a gain of 170 yeah. points. So it's been a slow, steady climb to the top today. And once again, the index is barely 50 points away from the 22,000 mark. So let's talk about what worked. IT, IT and more IT. So HCL Tech, TCS, Wipro, Infosys, all of your large cap names are right up there. IT was the best performing part of the market. Uh, but then you can never finish a sentence these days without talking about PSU stocks. So let me not go too far because BPCL has had another roaring session, 6.5% up on BPCL. It, uh, it takes the total winnings of uh, the year so far to 35% on BPCL. Uh, and then you have ONGC keeping it good company. Even the others, HPCL, etc. They all had a pretty decent session. And uh, let's not forget some of the other names like Coal India, SBI. So within the PSU pack, these were some of the active stocks. Along with Bharti Airtel. Bharti Airtel's results quite well received by the market. The stock was up uh, 2%. However, I must point out that uh, Power Grid was, uh, you know, uh, quite noticeable in terms of a bit of a cool off. While we're talking about the overall PSU rally, Power Grid managed to cool down a little bit. Okay, uh, on the losing side, you spoke about Power Grid, but Britannia lost, um, you know, its crunch ahead of its number. So Britannia was down 2.2%, ITC2 giving it company, and heavyweight Reliance Industries dragged its feet, ending with a cut of close to about 0.7%. The mid-caps outperformed. The mid-cap index goes home with a gain of close to about 1.2%. One of the stars of today's trade is the new listing, BLS eServices. You had strength coming through in other PSUs like IOB, IOC. Indibull's real estate gained close to about 11%. Yes Bank was up 11%. And on the losing side, Geo Financial Services gives up yesterday's gains. Um, and Bank of India continues to struggle post its numbers. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's just a, uh, counting down to the uh, final last couple of minutes, uh, last minute actually, just uh, in the last minute of uh, the trade, uh, and we'll have more stocks up on uh, your screen. So, uh, maybe look at some of these, uh, you know, broader market names, right? Uh, IRB real estate, perhaps uh, we can pull, put that up, uh, apart from what we've already mentioned. Big move today. Triveni Turbine is another one, which saw a very large move, and all of these backed by super strong volumes. Uh, there is uh, the Triveni Turbine, 20%. Jamna Auto is another one, well-owned institutional name and uh, stock did very well. Latent View, perhaps uh, will come up on your screen. Uh, so this is all in the mid and small cap uh, universe. Subex was another one which saw a very sharp move higher. Uh, and there was something like a Inox India, which uh, also went up sharply. So 
uh, you know, no dearth of sort of you know solid kind of movement uh, in the uh, broader market. Market breadth also looking very good. Well, I think uh, what 1600 stocks are higher. I mean, broadly, it's roughly not quite two is to one, but almost there. That is the advanced decline ratio for you. I think uh, we're done. 167 points higher is where the Nifty finally leaves off at. It's a wrap on uh, this edition of Closing Bell here from all of us. Goodbye. Thanks very much for staying with us. But don't go anywhere. Markets Forward will uh, prepare you for what's coming next. That's tomorrow. Stay with us.